Hello and welcome to Two Guys Small Talk. I am TJ Washuk. And I am Evan O'Neill. And with us today is TJ Washuk. And I am Evan O'Neill. <laughs> um, now here's your host. <laughs> No, TJ playing. Washuk. And I'm Evan O'Neill. <laughs> just on loop. Today is episode 21. Thanks for watching and listening. Um, that's the name of the episode. Yeah, it's uh, it's our last uh, episode of what we're going to consider season one of this show. Uh, we're going to get into that more later, what we mean by that. We keep making content. We want to keep doing a show. We just want to give it a little bit more direction this time. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll explain later. But... Um, yeah. The TJ's uh, got our topics. All right, I'm going to have a, another round of rapid-fire tech topics while Evan will be discussing culture. Fuck yeah, I am. Without further ado, going to get this ball rolling. All right, we are live. Welcome to the fucking show. This, this is, is the two guys show, not the big guy show. Two guys having a little chat. <laughs> Oh, hey guys, man. thanks for uh, thanks for Good. thanks for watching us. This is episode twenty one. It feels like it's been longer than a week. <laughs> yeah, I you know, know, man. I don't know. I, I want to do this every day. All I want to do is just look into your eyes and talk to you. <laughs> it's so easy, you know. I just uh, everything's easy with you. So as you can see, we don't have a guest. Uh, we had to make some new arrangements because that's um, all right. Yeah, it's all right. Definitely. Um, Let's us some, take our break sooner. <laughs> just some scheduling issues, conflicts. But um, let's see. I guess we can go into tech topics. This is Tech News with TJ Washuk. Um. So I'm pulling up my list here. I got a little list going because there was quite a bit that happened um, last week and this week. Uh, first on the plate was Spotify is renewing their lease with Time Warner, um, excuse me, Warner Music, and by doing so, it will help them become public. Um, I was unaware they were not public before, but yeah, I wasn't either. Different. But. Um... I guess that means that Spotify truly has a big enough stake in the music industry to warrant being public. I guess they are now the primo streaming service. Um, I think the age of digital downloads is pretty much dead. Seems like it. Most people I know prefer streaming over downloading or even buying hard copies now um, regarding music or any type of media. Like, even this weekend, bought a stream for UFC. <laughs> you know? Um, Absolutely. It's just speaking so of which, easier. speaking of which, we got a we got a gripe, a complaint. It's not a major one, but um, if anybody from UFC is listening, and I know you are, um, uh, you guys need to handle your PR a little bit better. Um, you had a massive surge of users trying to access your servers on the night of the fight. And you went down for a little bit, and you did not address it. I mean, I predicted it. I kind of figured it was going to go down just from so many people trying to log in to watch the fight. But They, uh, they addressed it on Twitter. They mm. said, 
it will resolve shortly. Thank you for your patience. That's all they said. That's all they well, did. Well, I think, you know, I think honestly, they knew. They knew, but. They um, should have said something, I guess. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, you can't blame them, but it's one of those situations where you look bad if you don't do anything about it. You don't say oh. anything about it. Yeah, if you just ignore it. Yeah. And that's pretty I mean, much what they've done so far. It's been, <laughs> what, two days now? They could have released yeah. it yesterday. I know yesterday was Sunday, but still. Um, Khalees said something. Today was Monday. Today was, I yeah, went Monday. back to the office and I talked with the guys at work about it. You know, the, over the weekend it was I talked to family and friends. And I wonder how many people were affected by this. I'm sure millions of people bought the stream from UFC. As we'll get those to, numbers. As opposed to, you know, um, buying off of DirecTV or Comcast or whatever. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's our next topic, man? Um, the next one was uh, Facebook has is changing their uh, ad policy. They're now going to be blocking people pages that spread fake news. Is what I just uh, read today on Engadget. Uh, basically, if it's deemable as fake news, they will not allow it to be promoted on Facebook. Um, yeah, also, we'll see, we'll see how that works out. Yes, yeah, so I don't know how they can differentiate. I'm I'm skeptical purely because of the backlash that I've been seeing from YouTube cracking down in a similar way, and but it's also like the Onion, you know? Don't, wouldn't they want to promote their stuff? I mean, there's there's some. Um. All right. <clears throat> There's satire news where obviously an adult, an educated adult reading it would be able to distinguish that it's not true. Mm -hmm. And then there's some news that is partly true, but then still narrated in a way that the average adult, educated adult reading it will still be influenced one way or another. So when we think about fake news, uh, what do we determine as fake news? What does Facebook determine as fake news? Um, is it blatantly untrue? Or is it counterintuitive to what... Or, or are we going to start to see that we'll, we will consider fake news counterintuitive to a, an accepted social norm? Which it might not even be accepted. It might just be like... There might be a hit list on Facebook. It's like block articles from these websites. But I feel like, you know how the onion, I'm bringing up the onion again. Um, from my knowledge, they were like one of the first satire news websites. Um, and people still to this day don't understand the onion is satire and yeah. share their news on Facebook because most people are headline readers. When they read the newspaper, they just read the headlines. When they read Facebook posts, they just read the headlines. They're not going to you know, dive into the link and click on it. And then they just share it. I saw one person on my Facebook wall. Um, she was like, <laughs> um, she posted something about um, some some baiting article. You can tell it was fake. And um, oh, it was oh, it was a KFC or no, Chick Fil A. So apparently there was a Chick Fil A fake news article going around saying that they're not going to serve blacks. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, so, yeah. and she shared that, and then someone called it out. And it's like, there's no way they said that. And then I looked into it, and it was a fake I, website. I got on. I got on to someone earlier because they were sharing pictures. It was like Obama out here feeding the people in Houston, serving meals at a cafeteria. He's out here doing that. My president's still black, and uh, it took me like one Google search to determine that that was yeah. false. But that those pictures were like from 2015, and they're floating around right now. But what I'm you, like, yeah. Sorry, but what she said was, I just share things. Yeah. That was her response to it. She's like, I don't no. know, I just share things. <laughs> That's her way of saying, like, this is what I want to believe. Uh-huh. And I'm not going to defend myself. I'm not going to sit here and critically think for myself or listen to anybody. Dude, that's ignorance. Yeah. That's ignorance. It truly and is. It's what disgusting. Disgusting. I hope you never fucking recreate until you fucking procreate until... You know better. Following up from that, or excuse me, moving on from that, um, 
the new Uber CEO has been appointed. It is the guy from Expedia, one of the... <laughs> <laughs> so hey. Expedia.com, the travel agency. And wouldn't it be great site. to be a CEO to just hop around like, all right, this place is getting boring. Let me go work right. at some other Fortune 500 fucking company. Seriously. Um, like, these guys don't have hard times. So we'll see how well they do. I mean, the guy knows travel, so uh, he knows how to run a company. Um, I did see he's very um, politically inclined against Trump. He's an Iranian um, immigrant. Wow, wow, wow. Um, Makes sense, It'll be interesting though. to see that because you know how Uber was on Trump's side and then they moved away because of backlash by the public. So maybe they're trying to get him on to show that they have a stance against that the That they're hip and progressive and against the, yeah. the mean, racist Republican president? Yeah. Exactly. Guys, like the least Republican president since Reagan. And you get painted like that. I mean, <laughs> it's very interesting how... He was... Oh, my God. The people just don't... They don't care. They don't care. They don't want to remember that the guy was going to run in the Reform Party... But then David Duke jumped on that ticket, and he was like, nope, never mind, not going to do that. They don't remember that he used to say that he was a Democrat in interviews in 20 years ago. I don't remember. They no. Don't care. They well, don't care. they don't, they just see what's going on right now. They don't look at the past. Yeah, that... yeah I know. You got you to learn from the past. Otherwise, you're stuck, and you're like, every time there's a Republican president, he's a racist hate machine taking us to war. That every time we have a Democratic president, he's a socially cool, progressive guy who's, uh, you know, benefiting other countries and shit like that. Like, come on, man. Like, Obama killed a lot of people or is responsible for a lot of deaths. We don't, like, we don't, like, acknowledge that. Yeah. But we'll, we'll sure as hell point it out whenever we're talking about Bush. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's good and bad to both sides. You can't just look at it one way. Yeah, I mean, I'm not happy. I'm, I'm not, not happy with Trump. I'm not happy with Trump either. Afghanistan, but, Hell no. but yeah, I'm not happy with a couple of things he's done. But you gotta, you gotta realize that whenever you're, you see like news outlets and media and like articles and little sixty second ads and everything is so negative, Trump. That's just think, to like, get views. I know. I'm like, because <laughs> it's the popular thing to do is to shit on him right now. Yeah, Kinda I like know. Like, for Bush to shit on Bush. <laughs> Yeah, dude, it's like it's crazy. People don't, I don't know. Younger, younger millennials don't pay attention or don't know or don't remember or just are not old enough. It's just really um, interesting though how I, I realize he isn't, you know, a perfect president by all means. Like there's, uh, there's no way. There's no, there is no. He's, it's the most popular scapegoat it's for just, the most part. Like they, there's not too much shitting on Obama. I mean, I'm not sure about Clinton. I am. I wasn't really that old enough to. Bill, to Bill Clinton is a rapist. Oh yeah, I guess they, they did have that because there was. Yeah. They they silenced. They paid women to, to be silenced. About that. But yeah. I wasn't like in the news besides the Monica Lewinsky thing, which I'm surprised he was still a president after that. And you're saying grab by, by the pussy is bad. He had fucking yeah, oral shit. sex in the Oval Office. What Our the last... fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the last, yeah. Oh my God, he's basically. Uh, and then Trump is very Clintonian, as as they well, as they like to say. They are he's very Clintonian with his policies. He's a very '90s progressive Democrat. Well, if you see like videos of him talking back in before he was president, before he was running for president. He's very much friends with the Clintons. He's yeah. They are, invited him to his wedding. Exactly. <laughs> so they're both, you know. I mean, Clinton's I used to Arkansas, think, but still, they're... I, I was scared there for a while that, like, Trump was a was a plant to fall under Clinton to make sure that Hillary was going to become president. Dude, yeah. I was scared of that. And then whenever, then whenever he got elected, I was like, oh, okay, all right. Uh, well, everyone, uh, well ma- <laughs> everyone thought that, you know, he was just doing this for shits and gigs, you know? Yeah, well, I think he is, though. <laughs> I mean, I, mean I, think he, I think he wants to run the biggest country, company in the world. Just and then, yeah, just, just to do it. And then be like, it. all right. I did it. Yeah. I, I made it to the top, basically. I think it's still too early to call, but there's plenty of people that are out there that's like, he's only going to be a one-term president. I'm like, you know what? Maybe we'll see what happens. Is. I mean, right now he's not really showing good strides, even though there has been some positives, but not too many. Well, we got to look at a couple of things. I feel like 
the Democrats are going to get crushed again in the, the midterm elections. Um, if they don't, if they do make a comeback, um, you know, it, that all depends on what um, Capitol Hill passes in the next year or two, or year or so till the midterm elections. That's what's important, is what they pass, and that's what's going to determine who controls. Because, you know, the, the president can be a Democrat like Obama, but, you know, all of Congress, or the majority of Congress can be Republican, like what happened in 2014. Mm-hmm. And but that's what I'm saying. One thing I can say for sure is that I feel that politics are a lot more important in our country now. Yeah, um, I, I, I think just like everything, you can blame it on the information age. I mean, yeah, it's more open. Yeah. But, um, you know, for the Obama, when um, he got his two tor- ter- 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 terms, um, you know, the Internet was still in its infancy kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't as easy yeah, to Yeah, well, it was social, social, social internet was. Yeah. I, I like to make that distinction. Social internet, yes, yes. Yeah, social interneting was uh, before, honestly, before Obama, for the most part, interneting was, uh, and I don't mean Obama himself, I would just mean like 2008. 2008, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. when... Social networking was super limited, and like social networking outside of your Facebook wasn't really peers. a big thing outside. to the public, right? Yeah, well, and MySpace wasn't a huge thing either. I mean, like, yeah, it, it's all honestly, uh, you know? honestly, there there were a lot of people. These were like high traffic websites, but it's like almost embarrassing the amount of traffic that like mid two thousands social networking traffic gets compared to today. Like everybody's on social network or networking. Well, everyone's on Facebook. Well, yeah, <laughs> that, but but I don't exclude um, things like LinkedIn. Most um, people are on Facebook, though, is what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, and that's why, and that's why you must get off of Facebook. <laughs> I mean, it depends you on must... what you see, who you're friends with. That's just, you know, what, what do they call it? The um, what's the term for it? Peers? No, you're um, the, you're the um, no, I've seen the same thing over and over again, the same type of views and not echo chamber. Echo chamber. Thank you. That's what it was. Yeah, dude. It's like the same yeah. echo chamber. It is an echo chamber. And that, I've been seeing more and more, more and more in like arguments, the phraseology and the words, people talking about echo chambers and vacuums that are created because of that. Mm-hmm. Like when you, when, we, when you think about Google, they created a vacuum where uh, it's like if you don't agree with our code of conduct, um, there is such a vacuum that whenever a guy like James, whatever his name is, when he pu- published that Google Doc, mm-hmm. um, it seemed extreme because there was no other like moderate opinions in there. Yeah, exactly. So, so that that happens a lot. It happens a lot in the, what's going on right now. Everything that's going on. I feel like I feel like though we are gonna have like some kind of huge backlash because I mean like Trump Trump getting elected honestly is backlash. Yeah. I mean, he was, like, awful and very unpopular, but he ran against, like, probably the most hated politician of all time. Uh, yeah, I guess, kind of. So it was like, all right, we pick the bad guy or the idiot. But so many people was with her, as they say. Yeah, <laughs> but they, yeah. they, they, they was brainwashed. They was being lied to. They was willfully ignorant. They was, I just share things. You know what? Um, I've been hearing, I mean, we already heard about this from, because it's already passed the election, but a lot of people just voted for him just to not have her in office type of deal, because they, mm-hmm. they didn't want her. Yeah, yeah, there were Democrats for Trump. Yeah, there's exactly. That's absolutely crazy. a thing. Um, well, that, well, that was like Republicans for Trump. Like, in all honesty, I feel like if Trump runs again... Um, he should run away from the Republican t- ticket. It might be wildly unpopular, but it might work. It might. Can you he imagine might that? Want, he might want Can to create you? another party. Can you? That's what Lincoln did. Really? Yeah. Lincoln ran for, ran under some fucking party ticket, and then whenever he was in office, he, he was like, "All right, this is the Republican Party now." Mm-hmm. So I mean, because because. Republicans, like Republicans, when I when I think of that term, I'm thinking of neocons, conservatives, yeah. pro-Israel, pro 
Um, religious, I mean, well, I wouldn't say religious tradition, but religious influence Christian in the media and, and, and in politics. Yeah, Christian, yeah. I mean, there's like Jewish ones too, but I mean, yeah. they, they sit there and play ball because, you know, they can, they're capitalists. It's, cap, it's, it's, it's capitalist. capitalist. Conservatives yeah, so are capitalism pretty much. Yeah, you know? yeah. When, when you can have economic capitalists, social progressives, or at least uh, central progressives, I think, um, that are still economically conservative. And that, like, be Trump's party. Because that's what he's doing. Yeah. You know, that's, that's his overall game plan, like, or how he's been. And, I mean, and, and yeah, and then he does, he does have to do something every once in a while to not lose those conservative constituents. Like, has to sign or nullify the Johnson Act. And... Has to have national prayer breakfasts and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, man. He's got a he's, he's got a, a a group of people that voted for him. So he has so he's to got a, a, appeal. To he that does these place. rallies. He does these rallies. I don't know why Obama didn't do those more often. I don't know why people are making it such a big deal having a rally. Bush didn't ever have any rallies because he was running a fucking war. No, yeah. I mean, that's just a business move point to have a rally. You know? mm-hmm. It's to get himself yeah. out there. And that he's makes the sense. president. He's the president, which basically means that he's the boss of the company. The whole company yeah. is still capable of working independently without him. It's like having a Congress like meeting, basically. That's why we call it a, pre- a presidency and not like a prime minister or whatever the hell else you would call your, your supreme leader. <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah. but go ahead. Um... Next quick topic. <laughs> um, this is fun. Yeah. Two guys having a little chat. So the next one, I guess the last on my list, because we already discussed the UFC, um, is the um, the Half-Life 3 writer, Mark Laidlaw, um, released some of yeah. the plot of Half-Life 3, what they've been working on. Um, he quit. Yeah, he quit, but he he released his part of the plot or part of his plot, um, basically showing that there's never gonna be a Half Life three. I think I don't. You know what? In all honesty, I think it wasn't real. Half Life three. It, no, no, no. His part, oh. or it wasn't, or wasn't accepted canon that they were working on. That's why I he feel quit. Like it was, <laughs> nah, maybe, maybe, but but I'm just saying, if he really did release, like. You get sued, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. He'd be in so much trouble, man. There's no way a guy like that didn't have a non-disclosure agreement. Yeah, but I oh, that's true. Because even though it's not gonna be released, there's still an agreement. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they still own the copyright for that idea. Yeah. They don't want somebody else making it and making that money. So who knows what? I didn't really get into much of it because I'm just I'm just sad about not having Half Life Three. I've, I've get, yeah. I gave up long ago. I gave up long ago. Uh, I realized I realized it was not ever going to happen. Whenever five years down the road, there was nothing. Duke nu- no, yeah. After five years down the road, nothing happened, and then Duke Nukem Forever got made. Yeah, that was that was the running joke. It was like, yeah, when's Duke Nukem Forever going to get right? made? Because it was. It was like ne- we everybody just accepted like, it was never going to happen. Was the, that was like a meme of the PC culture. Yeah, and then whenever that became a thing, in which uh, I hear it wasn't that great, no. but it still happened. Mm-hmm. It still happened. It's, it's like, well, Half Life Three is the joke now. Yeah, and it's, it's like switch places. It's like I remember. I think it was probably twenty ten or twenty eleven, maybe even twenty twelve. Um, some pictures of Gabe Newell came out, and it was like, "What's Gabe been doing?" He's been playing Defense of the Alliance. <laughs> like, that's what he does. He doesn't run his company. He just plays video games. I mean, I feel like... What have they done? Dude, I've been... How, how, how can they not take the risk? Yeah. Is what I mean. How can they not take... Like, have they just moved away from being a video game company just... to to a client? Mm-hmm. You know, have they have they completely shifted gears on what they mean to the video game world? Because that's who I they mean, are now. They're they're I, Steam. I mean, you know? like Origin or Ubisoft Origin. I think it's Ubisoft that has Origin. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's EA. 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 Yeah, yeah. But Ubisoft has something similar. Oh, okay. Like 
they really can't compete with what Steam is because Steam is the Walmart of computer gaming. But it's been around for so I long. I mean, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I'm like, you guys can't lose that much money if you make a game and it fails. But why? How would it fail though, Half Life? I feel like maybe people would maybe, wait, out, wait for the game to come out and get reviews. Maybe, maybe, maybe they just feel like that it's been too long and there's no way that they could ever release a product that would be good enough. Mm-hmm. The hype is 10 years old. Watch this, though. No, 13 years old. I feel they're going to pull a move like Nintendo's been doing is do nostalgia. Some type of nostalgia in the future. I don't know. A remaster? Something like that. Like a remastered version and then have like Star Fox 2, Half-Life 3 release into it. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe. Possibly. Well, I don't think Half-Life 3 was even finished, right? No, they didn't really do anything to it. I mean, they were were still working on the episodes. (laughs) Star Fox 2. LOL. And I heard that game, like, people want to play it, but I heard it sucks. Like, I watched the uh, Angry Video Game Nerds. Those guys play it. I can't imagine what it looks like. I mean, it looks just like um, Half-Life, or not Half-Life. First Star Fox? Star Fox 1, yeah. It looks like this first Star Fox. Same, Star Fox uh, 1 gives me, like, motion sickness. It's, like, awful. It's, like, how is this a good game? Yeah. Star Fox 2, I mean, Star Fox 64 is barely tolerable now. Right. And, it, it, oh, man, I hate to say this. Going back to GoldenEye, as much as I love that game, it's hard as yeah. fuck to play now. When I think about those, like, space, I guess, third-person shooter or first-person shooter space shooters, I mean, what stole my heart as a kid was... Uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron games mm. on 64 and GameCube. Like, those gosh, were that was good. those were way better than Star Fox, in my opinion. Yeah, they were way better. Star Fox might have been like one of the first to do it in 3D, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Oh, I guess I got to talk about uh, politics now. Yeah. Hold on, let me see that can. Do you have right this can? Oh yeah, brother. It's uh. Is that exclusive? Does each state have their own exclusive Bud Light can? Because I, I think, think we so, get uh, yeah. carnal ones out here. I think so, brother. Huh. I saw them that I said, That's cool. yeah, I'm going to get me some of them. I'll have to check to see if we have an old red can. <laughs> I, I fuck with Bud Light now because they do American flag or the America can. Because of Budweiser? Yeah. Yeah, because they got the money to, to <laughs> be niche. You yeah, know what? You know, all niche. right. I love... I love uh, well, they're the ones that bought... um. That brewery out here, right? Um, Four Peaks? I think so. I think so. So they have definitely have money. All right. So I'm going to go, as for my um, political topic, I'm just going to go to r slash the Donald. Politics with Evan O'Neill. I'm a pioneer. I'm an explorer. I'm a human. And I'm coming. I'm animated. I'm alive. My heart's big. It's got hot blood going through it fast. I'm here! I got a life force! This is a human! This is what we look like! This is what we act like! This is what I am! I've got the fire of human liberty! You'll never defeat the human spirit! You'll never defeat God! You'll never win! And I'm gonna see what I can find that might... Uh, Um, Oh, breaking North Korea fires an unidentified missile. Yeah, yeah. What was up with that? Did you read into that? North Korea fired a missile. This is from foxnews.com. North Korea fired a missile over Japan for the first time in eight years, the Pentagon confirmed on Monday, as the rogue nation sent message of a defiance to the U.S. and its allies in the region. I'm not going to sit there and read any more of that because I'm just going to type in North Korea, Japan on Google. The way you guys can see that I'm being fair about this that I'm not just reading from. Ugh. Fox News. All right, let's go look at CNN. <laughs> let's see what they say. North Korea has fired a missile over Japan, which Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, uh, or it's Abe, but it's Abe, has called most serious, the most serious and grave ever threat to the country. Uh-huh. The, the way you just pronounced that it reminded me of uh, Netflix's uh, Death Note. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pronounced Ryuk. <laughs> uh, did you did you watch dude. that? I didn't get that uh, far. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I didn't get that far. That 
I, I, you know what? I didn't give it an honest chance. An honest college try, as they say. Mm. Okay. All right, let's... Um, all right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right, okay. All we'll, right. Have to, we'll, we'll have to cut right here. That's all right. Because I'm stuttering too much. Man, I miss doing Meme of the Week. Oh, yeah. That, that was like the first episode, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, well, All right. I'm not going to do... Well, maybe if I go to Million Dollar Extreme, they're crazy. What are you looking up? The Million Dollar Extreme subreddit. Dude, they're fucking wild. They say, they say some fucked up shit. Well, it is um, Sam Hyde. I mean, yeah. that guy is pretty crazy. So imagine what his fan base... All right, all right, all right. So this is uh, on Million Dollar Extreme subreddit. Um, it's a Twitter account. <laughs> and the title says, which page of the Communist Manifesto is this? And it's just a Twitter account, R-U Tage, or T-A-G-E. If you read the entire Bible, Bible, <laughs> Bible, <laughs> if you read the entire Bible and are still a Christian, you're either stupid or have a fucked moral compass, in my opinion. And then it says on here two days ago, here's some of his tweets. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm bi, like lowly, and incest, and am a socialist. And you? Question mark. Below that it says, incest between consenting adults is not immoral. And below that, it says, first you gotta convince my sister to call me Nissan. Wow. I don't, know. I don't understand that last one, but uh, it's, it's hilarious. Now that's probably just one in a million. One in a million socialist. He probably doesn't represent... Everyone on the internet. No. <laughs> I mean, if you... Just... Let's go to Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I saw this wildly unpopular post on uh, gaming today. R Gaming? Or uh, something like that? Yeah, on R Gaming. It was uh, a little four-board storyboard of uh, the Imperial Guard from the start of Skyrim that talks to you while you decide what kind of race, class, and basically you are. And uh, <laughs> it's like one time I asked a prisoner what his name was, and then I sat there for 10 minutes watching him turn into every race and gender possible before making his, his decision. And then, like, the reply underneath it was, oh, did you mean a Tumblr user? Jeez. And people were, like, people were, like, mad about it. And I'm like, hold on, wait a second. That's, that's funny. That's it's funny. You might not like it, yeah. but it's it's funny to some people. It's... What do you call it? Uh, off the cuff humor, I guess. Or yeah. Not really edgy, but poking fun at. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's safe. It's not offensive. No, no, if no. Offended, if you get offended by that, you don't have a fucking sense of humor. And so I call in a conservative, a old man, or call in a liberal. I'm, we're going back to politics again. My bad. Um, oh, a that's, young that's my favorite thing. What was that one quote? You um. If you are not liberal or you're not, um, yeah, liberal by 25, you don't have a heart. If you're not uh, conservative by 60, you're stupid or something like that. What is that quote? Oh. I mean, I'm looking it up. If you aren't a liberal when you're young, you have no yeah. heart. If you are not a conservative at 35, you have no brain. <laughs> Who said that? That's good. That's good. It makes perfect sense. I don't understand. <laughs> this is what? Oh, it was. I guess apparently it was falsely attributed to Churchill, but I don't think he said that. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I think Churchill was a dirty old warmonger. Did you see they're making a movie? Yeah. With uh, Gary Oldman's gonna be playing Churchill. Yep. Um, they're also making a movie called The Death of Stalin. It's gonna be a Coen Brothers movie. Whoa. Yeah, I guess it's. I guess it talks about the little the vacuum. The, oh, there's that word again. The power vacuum that was created after the death of Stalin. That I'm really excited for that. Just because you said the Coen Brothers, and I feel that yeah. they would. They haven't made a movie like that based off of history. They like. They're they're Jews and they like to talk about communists. But because if you watch um, No Country for Old Men, was there Jewish themes in there? No, no, they're communists. They like to talk about communists. Oh. Like, like if you watch Hail Caesar. Oh yeah, I never watched he that. He gets abducted by. 
It's okay. It's okay. I mean, it was it was like dry. It was it was basically a black comedy for like the fifties or maybe early sixties, but I think it was the fifties. Hmm. So it was uh, it's all right. Kind of like a burn after reading. <laughs> uh, less less uh, less violent. Okay. Um. Well, I guess we should go into what was that? <laughs> For those at home, uh, Evan just did something very strange. He uh, picked his nose and had a little taste. <laughs> you don't taste it every once in a while. I haven't done it in probably ten years. <laughs> That's funny. Uh... Now, I'm glad this is the last episode for this season because I need a break. I'm over here eating my fucking boogers for your entertainment. <laughs> so, um, game plan for coming up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We said we were going to mention that. We were going to talk about it. Let's go. Uh, we are going to change the format of the show. It's going to be TJ and myself. Um, we'll be streamlining our conversations a little bit more. Uh, we still are going to have these shows packed with information and educated opinions. Um, but we're going to cut down on the amount of guests. We're going to keep our guests to subject matter people, to pieces that we want, like experts or people with experience to talk about uh, certain subjects. Um, we, uh, we're probably going to take off the whole month of September. Mm-hmm. And pick back up in early October. Uh, we are going to be working on uh, some horror movie reviews that we're going to get ready for the month of October. We're going to be watching and reviewing some of 30, our favorite. 31 Nights of Horror. 13. Holy shit. 31? That's a lot. Oh, uh, you want to do one every day? <laughs> no, I just want to do 13 Days of Halloween. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> one every day. Go fuck yourself, dude. <laughs> We're starting a bit late on that. But uh, we're going to try to have those ready so that way they can come out consecutively uh, one movie a day for 13 days of Halloween. Yeah. <coughs> um, so we'll get into that, what, the first the first week we'll post something. Um, basically, we'll, you know, we'll have to get a head start, of course, to, you know, get things going. Um... I think the first movie we want to do, exclusive, exclusive, is uh, the thing. The thing. Um, the uh, the nineteen eighties thing. You know the good one. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. We'll give our own point of view on the movie. Um, also, going back to our show, uh, what we want okay. to do our show is we're going to streamline it. Like I said, so we're going to have segments. Um, and uh, it'll probably it'll probably be a lot more uh, post production work that goes into it. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> we are gonna open up our uh, two guys hotline to a voicemail of the week. Sure. That's where you call us, you leave a voicemail, and then we'll uh, we'll pick the best one and put it at the uh, probably the end of the shows, yeah. just as a way of showing our appreciation. For our folks, we'll be we'll be posting that number and sharing it for you to call us. So uh, Dan will be handling that, and then um, once a month we'll try to do a uh, live hot hotline segment. Yeah, yeah, where you get to call in and talk shit or uh, talk shop. So we're ju- we're trying to figure out um what days to work it in where it'll work best for all of us, including Dan, because he's the one that. Is the uh, the keeper of the hotline? It takes, it takes it takes teamwork to make the dream work, and we do. Uh, 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 we're very appreciative of you guys supporting us. Uh, we're gonna provide a Patreon link in the link or in below. Uh, the reason why we are asking for money is because we are setting aside our own money to buy better software, better equipment, so that way we can create better videos, better content. That's what we want to do. But uh, anything that is donated will help us tremendously. And uh, like if you if you look at the Patreon, we do have a couple of reward tiers set up. 
like we're going to be giving away uh, t-shirts at certain donation amounts. We'll be putting out uh, thank you videos to people who do support. Um, it's not, we're not really setting a timeline on it. Uh, we're setting a goal. So once we get, I think it's a thousand dollars is what we have right yeah, now. Yeah, a thousand. We have a thousand dollars. That'll allow us to buy some more software first and foremost that we'll be able to learn how to use and uh, make our videos better. And, uh, and then we'll also be, like I said, buying better production equipment. I know I need some set lights. Yeah. Um, we're, we're wanting to film uh, more skits mm. and standalone videos. So <clears throat> we're, we're that and also, you know, up to production on the um, the podcast itself to get a soundboard, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We absolutely want to do that because we want to. We want it to just feel like a. A talk yeah. show, man. We want it to feel like you're ha you're hanging out, you're listening to the news for thirty minutes. You know. And that's another thing. We're not going to make them an hour long. We're trying to get them to thirty minutes and. Yeah, thirty minute format. Um, whenever we will have a guest on, we will go for a longer format to sit there and have, or try to have no, at least a somewhat meaningful conversation with that. Dig person. into it, you know. Um, but from from now on, if it's me and Evan. Um, or Evan and I, proper terms, proper English. Um, we will have you know thirty minute formats. I know you guys are used to um, longer podcasts. Some of you that are listening, uh, we're just trying to do this to make it more. Um, what do you call it? More marketable, I guess. In a way. Yeah, yeah. Like like what I, what I was saying, more mainstream. Yeah. You know, or streamlined. Um, I know anyway. a lot of podcasts out there. They can get popular if they're you know shorter than you know because who the hell is going to watch or listen to a two-hour podcast that from people you don't know you know <laughs> exactly so, like who gives a shit um not, otherwise otherwise we're just making hour-long rant videos and i don't want to do that because honestly the only people watching these are people that are friends with us um and show your friends why not show your friends show your friends if you like it if you think we're funny please share this with your friends. Uh, we absolutely have no problem with that. <laughs> like, uh, we, we're still trying to hit our view count on YouTube. We are still trying to get to 10,000 views, that way we can modernize our videos. Um, this is something that we definitely want to do. Uh, and if we, wanted to, we want two guys and a few good men to be more than just a weekly podcast yeah. or a weekly information show. We want... To sit there and make funny videos. I mean, me and TJ sit and tell jokes all damn day long. Yeah, <laughs> we wanna, we wanna, we wanna get into the video production side Man, of it. We do have uh, cooking two guys, which is doing tremendous. Um, got a lot of people talking about that. Yeah, thank so you guys for sharing that's, that. It's been a, as much. really fun working on that, um, and I hopefully we can continue that for much longer. Um, also, we like everyone was saying, we want to do more skits. Um, so, I, if we have some friends that want to join in, I know. Um, oh yeah, uh, two guys play. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah, two guys play yeah. games. Um, it is a um, kind of a series that we're yeah. doing. We're, we're like, like Thomas and I are currently trying to find time to set aside so like, we can finish playing. Bloodborne a play, as a let's a full play. Yeah. yeah, and then we've got uh, Kenny and Kyle who are playing Seven Days to Die. Um, they're getting on a streaming, so uh, we're we're letting we're we're opening up avenues for that to just add more content to what we do to because um, like I mean our audience likes more than just talk shows. Yeah, and exactly. News. So you can pick and choose what you want to listen yeah. to or what do you want to watch. You know. Uh, honestly, approach. we like it all, so that's why we're doing it all. Um, our main business plan, I guess, in a way, would be um, skits, podcast, games. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we want we want to be uh, a creative production company. Exactly. Yeah, you know, we want to be able to sit there and be more or known for more than just one thing and one type of shtick. And then that's also the thing we have to show that each person is their own personality. So yeah, the more exposure we have of them, the more 
people start to get to know them. Uh, I'm glad that Kyle and Kenny have jumped aboard. It's been really cool to see them get on. I want to help them out by getting them better uh, production value because I know um, they could use it. Um, I've just been thankful that I've been able to put money towards it um, with this mic, this lights. Um, but we definitely need some help. I'm, I know we keep saying, please help us, please help us. But we're trying to, if you guys like what we're doing. This is our yeah. dream. This is, this is collectively yeah. me and TJ's dream. We've, we've been best friends since uh, we were like 13 years old. And um, I mean, there's, this is what we, we want to do. Fun. This is kind of what we've always wanted to do. We've always wanted to write, create, be funny, be current. Um, yeah. It's just, it's, it's, so we're finally, we're finally trying to do it. And we're trying to include our friends. We're trying to include the people that support us. So, um, just, uh, all we ask is for some help. Yeah. You know? I mean, we're going to do the damn thing anyway. Yeah. So just... just how far do you want us to go? You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> anywho. Um, yeah, about time to wrap yeah. up, huh? We've we talked for about 43 minutes or so. Um, yeah. So, like I said, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, we, we're we going to try to get the live stream going soon um, next month. Um, maybe eventually have enough money to put up a website and do a audio podcast because you need a, a website to get that set up, I guess, is what I found out. Unless if you know other ways, let us know. Um, yeah. but it's been a pleasure. Um, see you guys in a month. We love you and good night. We love you. Arigato! This has been a Two Guys production.